welcome to today's virtual panel uh, of the 2020 Hawaii Book and Music Festival. Um, before we get started, I want to just quickly introduce myself. My name is Ryan Oishi. I'm going to be our moderator for today's panel, and I'm excited to be here with you all and to be excited, uh, excited to be here with Christina and Maria Lohalani to share about their new book, um, The Penguin Book of Mermaids. Um, uh, before we get started, uh, I did also want to say thank you to the Hawaii Book and Music Festival and to Roger for organizing uh, this series. I think it's really wonderful that we're able to be together during this pandemic. And I imagine many of us have attended many Hawaii Book and Music Festivals in the past and enjoyed uh, that energy of being together. Um, so, you know, I'm really appreciative. I think we all are appreciative to be able to continue this this year. Um, even though the space may be a little different, my hope as the, our moderator today is that that energy uh, we can bring forth together um, as well. Uh, so uh, that being said, I, I did want to introduce our two panelists for today. Um, and I feel really honored uh, to be invited to moderate today's panel. Uh, our first uh, panelist is Dr. Christina Bacalega. And uh, here's a little bit about her bio. Uh, Christina uh, is a recently retired professor from the English department at UH Manoa. She has co-edited and authored uh, multiple books, including The Penguin Book of Mermaids, uh, Fairy Tales Transform, 21st Century Adaptations and the Politics of Wonder, Legendary Hoi and the po Politics of Place, Tradition, Translation and Tourism, and the forthcoming Inviting Interruptions, Wonder Tales in the 21st Century. Um, I also wanted to add, and I shared this with Christina in our prep meeting the other day, uh, my deep appreciation and aloha for her. Uh, Christina was my department chair while I was at UH Manoa in the graduate program for English. And um, Christina, I really appreciate the love and care and support you extended to me and to all of my classmates during that time period. So. Mahalo for, for that and mahalo for inviting me uh, today. Uh, our second panelist is Marie Olohalani Brown. Uh, Marie Olohalani is an associate professor in the religion department uh, and a specialist in Hawaiian religion at UH Manoa. Her first book, Facing the Spirits of Change, The Life and Legacy of John Papa Ii, e. won the Kapalapala Po'okela Award in 2017 for our best book in the categories of Hawaiian language, culture, and history. She is co-editor along with Christina of the Penguin Book of Mermaids and her third book, Kapo'e Mo'o Akua, Hawaiian Reptilian Deities is forthcoming from UH Press uh, in 2022, uh, which I am very much looking forward to. Uh, as a kumu currently at Kamehameha Schools, um, I can see that as being a powerful and wonderful resource for my students and the students uh, coming forward. Um, I also want to share on a personal note, um, in addition to being a teacher, I'm also a parent of a four and two year old. And so not listed in uh, Maria Lohalani's formal biography uh, was a series of books that she helped to illustrate. And um, I I'm very much enjoy reading uh, this series with my four year old daughter, Maria Lohalani. So mahalo for it. She, uh, um, my hope is that she is learning Olalohoi as I am as well and slow but steady progress. Um, so mahalo for creating so many wonderful resources. Maybe the first question I would ask uh, Christina uh, and Maria Lohalani um, is to, could you guys please share a little bit about the book, about the project, um, what inspired it? Um, what were your hopes and goals in publishing this collection of, of mermaid tales? Aloha everybody, aloha mai kako, and thank you very much, Ryan, for such a warm, introduction and uh, I know that both Alohalani and I really uh, agree with the spirit of your comments. We really um, hope for an interactive session. It's difficult, it's a little more difficult to have it when we're not in person, seeing each other and enjoying the fragrant air in Honolulu uh, together and um, you know, eating the goodies at the festival together and all of that. 
but um, I hope that the chat um, is is active and that uh, Alohalani and I can uh, respond to your questions. It's so nice to see many uh, people interested in the topic. I guess I'll, I'll just start with, with that, like how we um, approach the topic and why um, we were actually uh, approached by the publisher, by Penguin. And uh, it was kind of interesting, like, wow, woo, okay, a Penguin classic, you know. Okay, let's, let's think about this seriously. And, um, but we definitely found our own uh, reasons to invest um, time and energy into the research that went into this book. Um, Alohalani and I come from different fields, um, though there is some overlap between us in training. Um, so um, I think our, our interests and our abilities were really complementary, and I could never have embarked in this without her or succeeded without her. Um, so, you know, mermaids, like, they're a big thing. They're a phenomenon. They're a cultural, popular phenomenon these days. And um, I think one of the reasons that the publisher was interested in the book was, well, there's a live action Disney film coming out at some point soon. It's still forthcoming. When they approached us, it was 2017. That's a long time ago now. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and it, the idea was that the live action film would be coming out pretty soon. It's still forthcoming. Um, but the phenomenon, the interest in mermaids has not dissipated or waned at all. Um, that said, what a lot of people associate with mermaids maybe um, is the Starbucks logo. And then of course, the Disney film, The Little Mermaid, the very colorful, see, I should have had that as my background, but that's too busy. Um, <laughs> so, um, but the Disney film, which is based on the fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen, The Little Mermaid. Um, so, what you may also have heard of is a controversy concerning that live action film. This cartoon that came out in 2018 is really quite relevant um, to what got us um, motivated to do a lot of research for this book, The Penguin Book of Mermaids. Um, as you can see, the most fantastic of all of those items and the list that the woman provides is instead the, 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 the race, right, of the Little Mermaid. And this was um, very um, uh, kind of uh, bad, I would say, <laughs> just bad um, <clears throat> uh, response that some people had to the um, casting of Halle Bailey as Ariel. The hashtag, this is not my Ariel, um, was um, kind of pushing back at Disney uh, choice. Um, so we had to really think about this because as people trained in folklore and um, in um, indigenous studies for Alohalani and indigenous religion, um, the centering of the mermaid phenomenon in whiteness didn't make much sense from what we already knew. And we decided that we would find out even more to kind of um, uh, strengthen that conviction of ours. So our project was really to decenter the Hans Christian Andersen and Disney Little Mermaid story, uh, not to make it the 
uh, center of attention when we're thinking about mermaids and instead replace that with an abundance of stories from around the world about merfolk, not just mermaids, but merfolk and water spirits. The title that we wanted for this book was um, Merfolk and Water Spirits Across Cultures. Of course, Penguin is Penguin, so it's called the Penguin Book of Mermaids. Um, another goal that we had that's related, of course, is to um, kind of counter the ignorance that makes the mermaids whiteness the norm, um, and also the kind of stereotypical femininity that this mermaid as we know her embodies. Alohalani, do you want to add, go from here or? Yeah, um, so what we saw, we have a couple of stories from uh, Trinidad and Tobago, and they're about black mermaids. And um, then other dark skinned mermaids from around the world. So that refutes the cartoon that says there is no such thing as black mermaids. There's mermaids, there's brown mermaids, black mermaids. And uh, I think one of the more interesting things that I found um, as we did our research for these stories from around the world is the way that these stories do not follow the stereotypical femininity of the British mermaid, yeah? So to give you an idea, since most of you, I assume have not seen or read the, the book, um, if you have, great. If you haven't, get it, but <laughs> pitch here. Um, just to tell you that we divided, we or we collected the stories into four different sections. And um, we were able to include these black and white um, illustrations to at least give you a sense of the bodies of these merfolk and mer spirits. So the first section is water deities and sirens from olden times. And you see an image there of the Babylonian uh, god, Oannes. You can see he's a fish god, but the shape of his hybridity is different from that of the classic mermaid. And um, in the um, excerpt that we were able to publish, um, he is said to, um, excuse me, he has said to um, use language, human language, to speak to the humans and bring knowledge to them that is helpful to them in their um, um, survival in that area. Okay, so he's a bringer of knowledge from the ocean. Um, mermaids and other mer beings in Europe was the second section. And um, in it, we mostly have legends and a few um, folk tales. Um, from Europe that give us an idea of how diverse, I use that word in, you know, carefully here, uh, within Europe, uh, the images and the stories of um, mer beings and water spirits are. And not all of these beings are from the sea. Some are, but some are from the rivers, some are from lakes. And you can see from the image that they are often associated with reptiles. So we, we think about fish and human for mermaid, but we really need to think about reptiles, snakes, dragons, and I'm sure Alohalani will tell us more about the mo'o later. Um, two more sections in the book, literary tales and um, can see that image is um, presenting actually still an unusual image of the mermaid. It's, it is a mermaid, right? She is a mermaid, 
but um, she's um, not um, sexualized the way um, a mer mermaids often are. In this section, we do include the Hans Christian Andersen story, uh, but we also include um, older stories like the legend of Melusina. And um, we have two contemporary or 20th century um, and 21st century stories, one from Japan, A Mermaid's Tears, and um, one from the US, Abyssus, Abyssum Invocat, um, which are both very interesting, not for children, um, adaptations of uh, Hans Christian Andersen's story. The last section is the largest. We have about 60 stories within the book and 33 are in merfolk and water spirits across culture. Uh, Professor Brown is responsible for a lot of the research that went into that section. Uh, it takes us from um, Africa to um, contemporary Iran, Persia, um, to Northern India, to Japan and China, the Philippines, um, Guam or Guahan, uh, Northern Australia, South America, uh, the Caribbean, North America, North American um, native um, stories, and of course, Hawaiian as well. So that's just to give you a bit of a sense of that abundance. And, and there were many, many more stories to choose from, of course, many, many more. This is a taste. Mahalo for that and uh, mahalo, Julia, for that question. Um, there were so many wonderful questions in today's uh, session. So um, we are here at 12 o'clock already. I, I don't know, Christina or Maria Lohalani, if you had any uh, last thoughts that you wanted to share with today's attendees um, as we sort of bring to a, a close today's session. I just put up a slide with um, so information about three stories in the book. One is the one I read, The, the Jaws of the Merman. Um, there's a mermaid of Honokavailani Pond um, that speaks to like a story on our, on our island of Oahu and um, the mermaid of Kessok from um, Scotland, just because they are different from your usual kind of mermaid fair and a lot of our stories are. We never talked about how we translated many stories. 20 stories from around the world that have never been translated into English before for your enjoyment. Yeah, and we didn't translate all of that. But... No, well, we and our collaborators- With Nine different so... languages, so. Yes, yes, yeah. nine different anyway. languages. Anyway, awesome. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss the book and to hear your questions. That's yes, right. thank you everyone and thank you Ryan for being such a wonderful moderator and you know Christine and I really had a lot of fun uh, collaborating on this book and I'm glad that you folks are interested in it and have joined us. Thank you so much and thank you Roger for the opportunity.